Hey, what's up, guys? This is Simon from Shanghai again. Welcome to another Every Chinese video.、Uh, right now, I think I've been making YouTube video for more than six months now.、Uh, from time to time, I saw people posting question, ask me, "Hey, Simon, isn't YouTube banned in China? Are people in China even allowed to use YouTube?" So today, let's talk a little bit about this, okay? Now, first of all, yes, YouTube is blocked in China, just like a lot of international websites such as Twitter, Wikipedia, Facebook, etc. So, if you would like to connect to this website, you will require a technology called Virtual Private Network, aka VPN. If you would like to have a comprehensive explanation of how VPN really works under the hood, you can go search on YouTube. There are plenty of outstanding video out there. But here is your every Chinese version of explanation. It might not be a hundred percent accurate, but it can roughly Give you an idea how it works. First of all, you can think of the internet as the modern version of post service.、Uh, if you would like to connect to a website, let's say YouTube, first of all, your computer will write a electronic version of letter to YouTube. Then the letter will be sent to your local internet service provider, aka ISP.、Uh, you can consider ISP as the modern version of post office. Then the local ISP will forward that letter to YouTube based on the IP address. Of course, there will be a million steps before the YouTube actually receive that letter because the letter will be forward to another post office, then a bigger one, then probably to a place which is in charge of international communication, and eventually reach to the YouTube side. And after YouTube receive that letter, it will open it up and check what you have write in there. Let's say you want to connect to YouTube, so probably you will say something like, "Hey, YouTube, give me your homepage." So then, YouTube will get their homepage,、uh, break into pieces. Put them into hundreds of letters because one single letter can only contain certain amount of data. Then YouTube will send those letter back to you. After you receive those letter, your computer will process them, combine them together, and display them on your screen. That's how things normally work. But here things are a little bit different because in our local post office, there is a blacklist. So when our letters reach to the local post office, first of all. They will check whether the address that we are trying to send to are on that list. If they are, then they won't forward those letters for us. Then on your screen, you probably will see something like this. So now that's when VPN comes into handy.、Uh, it is like a middleman. The VPN is like send me those letters first. I will forward them for you. So、uh, instead of directly sending letters to Google, you are going to send all these letters to the VPN server. When your letters reach to the local ISP, this time they will happily forward for you because the VPN server's IP is not on that blacklist.、Uh, after the VPN server receive it,、uh, he will resend it to the Google. The letter will also firstly be sent to its local ISP, but because its local ISP probably doesn't have a blacklist, actually, it probably also has a blacklist. But at least Google is not on that list, so Google will finally receive those letters and it will write back to the VPN server. Then the VPN server will forward them back to you.、And、that's how it works. The VPN is like a middleman to help you to communicate with Google. Which is banned in China.、Uh, by the way, our original letters are encrypted. So even someone in the middle opens the letter and want to figure out whom we really want to send to, they won't be able to figure that out because all the information is encrypted.、Uh, theoretically speaking, only the VPN server can decrypt that message and find out what you really write in there. Uh, of, of course, the whole process is actually way more complicated than that, and a lot of technology is involved. But that's my understanding of how it works. So instead of asking whether、uh, Chinese can watch YouTube, the real question should be whether Chinese are allowed to use a VPN. Well, that is a really tough question because, as far as I know,、uh, there's no written law saying that Chinese are not allowed to use a VPN. Uh, but according to our media,、uh, using VPN without permission is definitely not a good thing.、Uh, one thing I know for sure is that according to our cybersecurity law and based on some previous cases, we are definitely not allowed to sell VPN. So if you get caught. Uh, selling VPN, you will definitely go to jail. Now, generally speaking,、uh, using a VPN to access international websites shouldn't bring you too much trouble,、uh, because actually in China, a lot of people really have that demand.、Uh, for instance, as a software developer, without the real internet, you can't access a lot of open source library, which are very important to your workflow. 
And as people working in academia, they also need to read papers from an overseas website. And for people who are working in、uh, international trading companies, they also need to chat with people from all over the world.、Uh, not everyone is using WeChat, right? And even for people from one of our biggest newspaper, according to their chief editor, all of their employees are using the VPN because they need to read news from the outside world to write their news. And last but not least, pornography is completely illegal in China, and we have millions of single dudes. So you get the idea. Anyway, if we are just watching YouTube, reading some news from New York Times or Twitter, I don't think anyone is going to bother us. But it doesn't mean we can do whatever we want because you know it's China. As long as you don't talk about those very sensitive matters,、uh, you should be fine. And you can also have your own YouTube channel, Twitter account, Instagram. If you ask me, hey, is there a list that specify what we can talk about? I would say、uh, no. Everyone kind of makes his own list based on his lifelong experience, and it is not very accurate. Actually, I don't think there is anyone able to tell you what 100% for sure, like what you can talk about and what you can, because it is always changing. Uh, moving on, let's don't make this video too sensitive, okay?、Uh, let's talk about something else.、Uh, I think you guys may be curious about how many Chinese have the habit of watching YouTube.、Uh, well, first of all, because YouTube is banned in China, so I don't think we can get a very accurate number.、Uh, personally, I don't think there will be a lot、uh, because most of my friends and colleagues around me. Don't use VPNs in the first place, and even they use VPN, as I've mentioned before, they use VPN for other purposes, such as code developing, reading papers, etc. And in China, we have a lot of videos platform as well. So for average people, they really don't need to come to YouTube. Even for a lot of Chinese living overseas,、uh, they still use those Chinese video platform instead of YouTube after they move to other countries. So I would say maybe one out of a thousand watch YouTube. So. Uh, you know we have a total population of 1.4 billion people, so maybe around 1.4 million people will actually watch YouTube. Well, that's just my gut feeling, so don't quote me on that. Although China doesn't have a lot of people using YouTube,、uh, but based on my seven years of experience of using YouTube, I feel like recently there are more Chinese content creators coming to YouTube. Uh, most of those content creators were already making videos in China. Now they just upload their content on YouTube as well,、uh, which doesn't add a lot of work to them, but sometimes give them an incredible amount of return. I think some of them now consider YouTube as their main source of income,、uh, because you can get more audience and get more money here, and because you have a relatively free platform compared to the ones in China, and because YouTube will give you more return per view. So a lot of content creators actually stop posting videos on their Chinese platforms, and mainly focus on YouTube. That's also just my own observation. So, might be not a hundred percent accurate. For my Western friends out there,、uh, if you are interested in Chinese culture, food, and other China-related stuff,、uh, here are several channels worth checking out. Number one, Li Ziqi. She's a young lady living in her rural hometown. In her videos,、uh, she makes all kind of local Sichuan food by using traditional Chinese tools and techniques.、Uh, everything just looks so beautiful together.、Uh, the food she made, the clothes she wore, and the scenery around—it is very high quality stuff.、Uh, I never have seen a professional TV show can make rural China that beautiful. So definitely recommend. Number two, Miss Ye. She's also a lovely young lady, but she lives in a big city. I think she is like the opposite of Li Ziqi, but also in a good way.、Uh, Li's video is calm and peaceful, but Ye's videos gives you a fun and lively mood.、Uh, she's just like a typical modern Chinese office lady.、Uh, she's energetic and creative. In her video, you see all kind of creative technique and weird tools for making his lunch,、uh, which is quite fascinating.、Uh, number three, Chef Wang. He's like the Chinese version of Gordon Ramsay. Every time I want to make some Chinese dishes that I don't know how to make, I will check his video. Nothing fancy in his video, but a pretty down-to-earth guy showing you how to cook properly. So if you want to make some traditional Chinese food yourself, I think you can check his video. But good luck of finding all those traditional Chinese ingredients.、Uh, and if you speak Chinese, I definitely recommend you to check these two YouTubers.、Uh, one talk about history. And one teach you almost everything.、Uh, okay, guys, I can't cover every single great Chinese YouTube out there.、Uh, we actually have a lot of outstanding Chinese YouTuber nowadays, and I'm pretty confident that we will have more in the future.
Uh, all right, I think that's pretty much it for today's video. Uh, if you like my video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want more content about China from every Chinese dude, uh, I recommend you to subscribe to my channel. Once again, thank you so much for all the love and support, and I will catch you on the next one, okay? Peace.